My name is Arun Ghosh and I'm a, a clarinetist and composer and I'm the musical director and composer and sound designer for My Name Is. And how did you first get involved with My Name Is and what um, particularly interested you about it? Mm -hmm. um, I worked uh, with Tamasha a few years ago on a play called Child of the Divide that was written by Sudha and directed by Christine and it was on at the Polka Theatre and uh, really loved that process and I think uh, wrote some very special music for it and really in enjoyed being involved with Tamasha. You know, I've really loved them as a theatre company for, for a long time. So I really enjoyed working with them. Um, it was a great play. And so when Sudha approached me to work on My Name Is, I just really liked the idea of working with her again and working with the company. Um, I loved the, the script. Uh, when I was sent the first draft, I kind of loved the elements of the of the storyline, the, the Scottish setting, the Asian, Muslim, family elements, stuff about children, stuff about people falling in love, falling out of love, the kind of global scale that it that the story took on. It's just found it really exciting, and and also liked the fact that it was verbatim. So this was kind of coming from the real people's words. I found that quite interesting and challenging and thought thought, thought it would be kind of a very uh, creative and inspiring kind of thing to be involved with. So it all came together and here I am. Um, um, do you have a particular process for creating music and sound for mm -hmm. a theatrical production or is this something that's unique to each piece of work that you do? Um, it's, it find, it, it's both unique and there is a sort of process that I go through, I suppose. Um, in general, you know, I'm inspired by the things that make us tick in terms of theatre. So I'm inspired by the text, by the acting, of course, by the themes, by the energy, the emotional energy of the piece and what the director and the cast are bringing to it. I'm inspired by movement. I think I mentioned the text already. Just the way that words and phrases are being delivered. All of those things just kind of inspire me. And then Ultimately, there's the kind of world that we're trying to create, and creating sound and music for theatre is, um, for me, I just see it just like lights. You know, it's just kind of um, a way of a way of helping create a world. You know, and um, sometimes that's kind of in terms of practical sounds. You know, just atmospheres and placing us in a particular location. Um, but sometimes it's it's the emotional energy of something and in a way that I sort of said it reminds me of lights. Sometimes I think you can kind of colour the stage and the text and the actors with sound, you know, and, and change the motivation of something and help bring out the emotional energy of something. You know, stuff that's already there and coming through but um, it helps bring it out. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm aiming to do with my use of sound and music in theatre. So to create that, I suppose it, it differs from project to project, it from, from each different play, some things require a lot of music, a lot of uh, other things require a lot of sound design and, and atmosphere, some things are more experimental and abstract, some things we're sort of setting it in a realist kind of place where we're, we're using music to sort of say this is where we are, we're in 1930s Alabama or whatever. Um, so this is obviously quite different in lots of ways. I mean, uh, there's specific locations. So there is the time, there's the early 80s into the 90s. You know, there's Glasgow. That's kind of inspiring me to a certain extent. So just had kind of suggestions in the script of various kind of bits of music that the characters would have been listening to, the stuff that, especially as they were falling in love, the kind of music they'd have been into. Uh, you know, stuff like the Commodores and the Bee Gees and all of those kind of things. Then there's kind of other things, there's the kind of Asian family kind of element of it in terms of um, Atif Aslam, the sort of Pakistani singer and musician. And so that's kind of interesting. Now those are the sort of songs that are just finding their way almost into the soundtrack, um, which is not something I often do um, when I'm working on, on, a, on a play. But I'm kind of enjoying those being in there. But in terms of the music I'm composing for it, um, I wanted it to be very free of kind of... I didn't want it to be led by, say, for example, the Asian element or the Scottish element. I wanted this to be like a love story, inverted commas, 
um, between two people or the story of love, you know, from it. It's it starts right through, you know, to everything that happens. So I wanted to kind of like make that feel that um, it was true to them as people. It didn't matter who they were, where they were from, what era even they lived in. And so I kind of, um, I thought, I wanted to sort of use instruments like the cello and the piano and strings and, and more classical kind of stuff, you know, quite graceful and beautiful music in places that didn't have the kind of hard edge of the city, of the eight, you know, of Glasgow in the 80s. I didn't want it to be escapist, but I almost wanted it to kind of connect to um, their emotions, really, aside, totally separate from where they were and where they were at. Um, because their voices tell the whole story of where they are and where they're at. So I think music could could be sort of slightly different from that. So that's the plan anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, actually, kind of, I'm going to skip a question here because okay. this is kind of more relevant to All what right. you were saying. Okay, okay. Um, it, it's, it, you were saying that it, it's, you, you've mentioned that there are musical suggestions and also just music of the, the period and the place. Mm -hmm. um, how how do you kind of find a balance between the original stuff and the existing music of the, you know that's relevant to, to the period? Just sort of find what's working, you know, certain bits that I'm composing work very well for scene changes and taking you from one place to another or just almost kind of putting the button, putting a marker, a sort of statement on something that's mm. happened, leading you into something that's going to happen. Mm. Sometimes I'm using it as an underscore to sort of just help bring out the kind of emotional energy of of what's happening in the text, you know. Um, for example, kind of when um, Susie is at the beginnings of her uh, nervous breakdown and, right, taking her into hospital. I sort of, you know, that's the sort of thing that um, music can really help bring out, bring out the edginess of that, you know. So then you hear those words in, in a new context. Um, so um, that's the kind of thing I've been doing, and then yeah, the the songs sort of place us more in the real world and more at, at the time, you know. And also, you know, um, give us again that kind of feeling that these were young people, you know, who who fell in love and went out and danced, listened to music together on the yeah. radio and and on, on the car car stereo, just on tapes and stuff like that. I love I love all of that. It's uh, it, you know, I really love it, and so um, and so that's kind of why I'm really pleased that those things are in there. Yes. And and when when you're doing something, well, any, any piece of work, I guess, but with, with particularly with my name is, mm. um, do you generally do you prepare anything before you come to the rehearsals, or do the is it more that the rehearsals inform the creation of the music? Yeah, the latter. I mean, I don't kind of uh, tend to kind of come in with set ideas. I often come in with ideas of uh, what it is. I, who it is I want to work with, what my sound is often, but often even that is like stuff I kind of discover during the course of the rehearsal process. I can't come in with anything pre pre written because I just don't know. I just don't know what the director's going to be like, you know, in terms of what he or she is going to bring to the piece. I don't really know kind of what the actors are going to be like. I'll be meeting them often for the first time on the first day. I've read the scripts, obviously, when I start something, and I've got my ideas about where music might be wanted and what I might want to do with it. But I let that all emerge, really, which is a little bit, can be a little bit fraught sometimes, you know, because you kind of, um, it gives you a limited amount of time to create stuff. You know, often it's, you know, a week to ten days, maybe even two weeks before, you know, actors and directors start getting their business together, yeah. etc. <laughs> Which is, but that's part of the process, you know. You can't, it, you can't just sort of walk into it and deliver it. You got everybody's got to discover what it's all about, you know, and how to make this thing come off the page and into reality. And um, and so music just goes alongside that, really. And um, so that's kind of why this is for me. This stage, you know, a week before we open, is kind of very, very exciting time. I've almost got it all mapped out what I think I want to do, but there's still quite a lot of elements where. It's almost like fitting the jigsaw together in terms of how the music's working and I'm going to be playing some of the music to the company, you know, for the first time tomorrow. Wow. And, um, you know, 
that's kind of quite exciting. Sometimes you see I sort of, I'm in the rehearsals all the time, playing, putting things in, using the piano or keyboards and bouncing directly off the actors and stuff. This piece hasn't been like that actually, it's been more about me just coming in, seeing what they're doing, listening to their voices, look, look, paying attention to the pace of kind of how they're working at things and thinking, okay, this will slide in really nicely here, this will help take us from here to there and so on. Um, so um, it's all up there at the moment, it'll kind of come out in the next few days. So um, the, the cross-cultural and also cross-continent uh, nature of the piece, how has that uh, affected what you've been creating? Um, it's interesting because often a lot of the stuff I do has, has those elements, you know, I come from a kind of British-Asian background, so I've got kind of Western classical and jazz and pop and rock and hip-hop and jungle and rave elements and all those things, you know, to me. But I've also got a strong South Asian element that is very, very central to my musical identity and what it is I do and what I'm about and almost in some ways what people expect of me. So, you'd have thought that I'd sort of want this to be kind of like that, but I don't think so, you know. I kind of, um, the reason I chose the cello to work with is that I didn't want to kind of place it, I didn't want to place it in a kind of Asian thing, because it's not really, in lots of ways. It's, a, it's about identity, of course, and it's about religion, of course. But I see, I very much see it, and it is very much about a cross-cultural relationship, about a mixed relationship that is totally central to it all. But I didn't feel the need to place us in any way in terms of that. I think what the characters are about speak for themselves, you know, white, Scottish woman, young woman, you know, Pakistani, Glasgow. Muslim man, you know, it all kind of comes through through what they're saying and how they are and how they interact and so on. I don't need to place it in any way. I think I'm kind of interested almost in abstracts and what they're about as people and what they're going through, and I think that's universal. So I'm using, I'm deliberately not placing it in an, the sound I'm composing in an Asian context, deliberately. Um, we are kind of place, we are kind of using music like Atif Aslan, Pakistani singer, in places, and that is almost almost for realistic reasons because that's kind of what they listen to. Mm -hmm. It's not to say, well, these guys are like, you know, Pakistani. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I might be right, and I might be wrong in that. I think I'm kind of right. I think I'm kind of. It's liberating working like this, you know, and to not feel that I have to kind of um, write Asian sounding music in this at this time because I don't feel feel that creatively that's necessary. I think like you know, music is universal, <laughs> and uh, and um, this story is universal, and and so you know we're just kind of going with that basically. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pleased that it's gone in this direction. I think the cello's sounding lovely. I think it's really kind of... I love the, the sound of the cello. It kind of... It's so close to the human voice. It, and it's, so, it's got such a strong female identity in terms of its sound, if that makes sense. But it, I think it, the depth of it also has, has more kind of male frequencies as well. It's a very kind of both male and female instrument. I think actually all instruments are male and female and also other as well. Not just male and female, but beyond that, beyond those things. And But the cello definitely has, has something about it, that, a quality to it that really kind of resonates with both of those things. And there's so many words in here. There's such beautiful voices, you know. I love hearing the Scottish accent. I love hearing the Asian Scottish accent. I also love hearing the Scottish Scottish accent. <laughs> and uh, I just... I love the sound of the voices, you know, and, and I think the cello is really going to help bring those out, you know, the perfect instrument for this. So um, that's just where I've been at. It's more about the instrumentation and the energy of, of what it's all about than, than creating music that's supposed to sound like it's from somewhere, I think. Great, thank you very much. Yes,